It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, uh, where we take you through the pages of our dailies as uh, being made available by a paper vendor. We have Ezekiel Nyai Tok, who is a public affairs analyst, is on standby uh, to make sense of all of the headlines. Ezekiel Nyai Tok, it's good to have you join us this morning. I'm always very delighted, pleased, and excited, and privileged to be on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for having me. All right, then, thank you so much. Uh, we start a journey with the Daily Independent paper this morning. The banner caption says, Erufai Akere Dolu misread Buhari's directives on Buni. President endorsed Buni to perfect plans for March 26 convention. Cautions governors against proactive alternances. That's what you find underneath the caption talking about the APC leadership crisis. Even though some quarters are saying there's really nothing going on. Of course, the APC is still saying uh, there's no tussle, there's no uh, issue with the APC. Everything is going on smoothly. 2023 presidency, Tunubu asks APC senators to support his lifelong ambition. And one thing that was very outstanding yesterday was the handle on Twitter. We're talking about the micro blogging platform. You have the, that platform, uh, you know, tweeting about the APC. And it got a lot of Nigerians talking and saying this is actually the handle or, you know, of lawmakers or the National Assembly is not supposed to be tweeting, you know, issues about because it's, it's a body. It's not the party. Uh, but... Uh, it just shows, it's just a reflection of what it is. House of Reps, APC Kirkus endorses him, and that's what you find. Tension in Imo as gunmen kill two prison officers. Very sad incident. United Kingdom debunks suspending student and work family visa for Nigerians. NJC wants two judges and recommends 15 for appointment. Outgoing Governor... Obiano says he fulfilled most of his promises. Retired Air Force Chief lost 228,428. Uh, okay, so I like to take that again. Retired Air Force Chief uh, loses uh, 228,428 million dollars property to federal government federal government blames gas shortage for current power situation considers dragging nas the court over electoral act amendment and 2023 pdp pegs presidential form at 40 million naira governorship at 21 million uh, that's a lot right there let's move on to the next uh, paper the punch newspaper with these headlines El Rufai, other APC governors lose out. Buni meets Buhari returns today. Wonder why we had that uh, back and forth yesterday <laughs> with the APC official. El Rufai, other APC governors lose out. Buni meets Buhari returns today with the following writers. APC chair Pali's president in UK returns from Dubai trip, cancels neck meeting. Party may die if crisis continues, Buhari warns, directs DSS police to provide cover. One wonders what they are providing cover for, hopefully not some bullets. Banks' total assets rose by 8.25 trillion naira in 2021, CBN report. Details on page 25 of the punch. Blackout. FG blames gas shortage and vandalism. OK's 40 billion now for discos. FG blames gas shortage, vandalism. OK's 40 billion now for discos. National Assembly proposing criminalizing illegal connection meter bypass. This is according to the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC. Electoral Act, FG exploring court talks on amendments, says AGF. So they haven't given up this yet. FG exploring court. Talks on amendment, says FAGF. Uh, that's about the Electoral Act. More from the punch. NJC places judge on watch list, warns another for misconduct. And PDP presidential aspirant forms to cost 40 million naira. The list was put out yesterday. Quite interesting. Um, they've uh, brought up, uh, given a 50% slash for young people between the ages of 25 and 30. 
Most port scanners are obsolete, says Custom CG. Most port scanners are obsolete, says Customs CG. Tinbu berates presidential aspirants over defections, sells bid at National Assembly. Ondo shoemaker claiming self defense stabs landlord's son to death. And the Yoruba nation, Akintoye, others ask court to stop AKT Oshun Post. These are some of the headlines on the front page of The Punch this morning. Well, we move away from the Punch newspaper this morning. We'll take a quick look at uh, the leadership newspaper. And it says, allow Buni complete his tax at national convention. Uh, that's what uh, President Mohammed Buhari says or said to the APC governors. Allow Buni complete his tax at national convention. And everyone will be wondering, what is his tax? Uh, Order status quo in party leadership in a strongly worded letter. That's what you find, a very strong one. Buni arrives in Nigeria and cancels neck meeting. Mustafa Adamu Yari uh, Al Makure, Musa, others speak chairmanship forms. Uh, that's what you find. I mean, a lot of persons are still in doubt whether or not, you know, the 26 would still be very viable. But uh, a lot of Nigerians and fingers are crossed. PDP presidential primary likely in May. Uh, that's what uh, you have here as well. Help me achieve my lifetime ambition. Uh, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, begs APC lawmakers as they have also agreed, you know, to support and endorse him. Buhari apologizes to Nigerians over petrol and electricity shortages. Uh, you also have the National Judicial Council wants two judges, recommends 15 others for appointment. And just before we move away from the leadership newspaper this morning, student work family visa for Nigerians not suspended, the United Kingdom is quoted to say. That's it this morning on the leadership newspaper. And we take a final paper, The Nation, and uh, with these headlines on its front page, the big one there, Buhari to APC governors. Buni remains party chair. Buni remains party chair. And the writer, president, insists on March 26 convention date. Yobe governor, back, cancels neck meeting. Reminds me of the song by Mac Morrison, titled Return of the Mac. I think they should play that when he walks into the APC uh, National Secretariat, aptly named Buhari House. Um, what a coincidence. More from the paper, PDP neck fails to OK zoning. PDP neck fails to OK zoning. Pay 40 million naira for form. Um, interesting where the nation newspaper is putting this one. Yoruba nation agitators file suits to stop Ekiti or Shun Pose. In Malami, we're seeking options on Electoral Act. Lautech alumni reject Markin Day's move to rename University. Senators' reps so pledge support for Tinubu. Senators' reps pledge support for Tinubu. And we have Resign Now, Aerofy tells ambitious appointees, it's those who um, would like to contest for positions in the forthcoming elections, and Solodor takes office in a number. Of course, we had that uh, he had only 50 persons um, on the list of those to attend his inauguration. Some of the are pulling out their hair because of that. Time to um, introduce at this point uh, our guest analyst. Uh, always a pleasure to have him. Um, Ezekiel Inyaitoke is a public affairs analyst. Good morning to you, sir, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. I'm always excited to be with the two of you. I don't know why, but I just feel very happy. All right, all right. Uh, Buni has, has made his uh, triumphant return, like Jesus Christ of Nazareth made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Um, after leaving Nigeria to go to Dubai to check on it, to see his doctor, uh, maybe he had a headache or something, he had to leave Dubai to go to London to see the president who left Nigeria to go to London to see his doctor. And they both had a meeting of minds, and um, Buni's head was saved, and now he's back in the country. And of course, um, like, uh, like uh, Julius Caesar, he, or he, he, he had his first execution, which was to cancel the National Executive Council meeting that was to hold today, which was meant to eject him and his team. What are your thoughts on this, Mr. Yaitu? 
I, I, I read your mind when you were talking, and there's a song that I think that you were trying to sing, and that song says, "The Return of the Mac." <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think uh, Bunny's return is like the return of the Mac, you know. But um, the analysis, the whole issues around Bunny and APC is sickening to say the least. It's annoying, it's irritating, it is actually provoking. When, when you see a country that un until maybe a month or some weeks back was the poverty capital of the world, and you see the ruling party not being able to draw a line between politics and governance, then you wonder where our salvation is gonna come from. And that same party, is having all this boldness and this, this audacity to see itself coming back to power, meaning that they are either oblivious of the feelings of the people or they feel they have conquered the people so much that the people have lost their voice and their vote, or they are living in a fool's paradise. I always give this illustration because it just tells me the mind of the people in power. The late Joe Wires, when he was in US, when there was a coup that toppled the Shagari administration. And when he came back, there's a statement he made. He said he was saddened. That the sadness was not that he was out of power, but that he actually saw Nigerians on the street rejoicing that they were out of power. And he was confused because he thought they were doing so well. He thought they were like the heroes of the people. And he just realized for the first time that they were so unpopular and that they were living in a different world from the realities of the nation at that time. Now, as at today, look at APC as a party. They have failed completely to draw a line between politics and governance where politics is supposed to be handled by the political party and governance was supposed to be handled by the executive. Today, the leadership of the political arm is an executive member in the office of a governor, given a mandate by his people, one of the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and of the 200 million Nigerians, of the so-called 40 million members of um, APC, they cannot find a competent person to run the alternate arm of the system, which is the political arm, but an elected governor. And you know, what they're even doing now is something that I sit down and I ask myself, do they really understand what is going on? I was a national chairman, and I want to tell you that when 19 of your governors say we want something this way and you tell them they can go to hell that you want it the other way they keep quiet and wait for you okay do the national convention there are certain criteria that are statutory you cannot change you cannot handle the delegates they will bring the delegates and the delegates are those that will decide what to do so rather than the Mr. President at a time like this giving matching orders, copying the director, uh, the, 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 the man in charge of the police and the man in charge of the SSS, which means, or DSS, which means it's about power, it's about an order, it's about, a, a, you know, a control. And you're telling this man must get into office. No problem. The governor should keep quiet and welcome him. Let him set the criteria yeah. for the national convention. And then let us see what the power of the chairman Alpha is going to go. But we should, uh, Mr. Yatu, should we be looking at the, the 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 motive of these governors? You know, um, what the periodists come out to say they want, um, and looking at the motive of the president and uh, and those who are in support of his actions, um, to 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 see okay which of them is protecting the interest of all interest of um, of democracy, of um, of of the party. You know, because in the past, the governors have even said that they, they want a governor to emerge, a governor must emerge as a flag bearer of the party. What is the constituency of Mr. President? Ask yourself that question. 
In terms of land, he only has one little place called the Federal Capital Territory. The rest of the 36 states are handled by the 36 governors. When you go to national convention, where is the power of Mr. President? Who is going to bring, who, who are his delegates? Are we thinking here at all? The 36 governors are going to bring the delegates from the 36 states who are going to be the people to vote on whatever is to be done. So Mr. President should have been wise at this time, smart at this time. As he came back, what he would have done was to call the governors to a family meeting. Guys, guys, you know the way these things are. What do we do? How do we get about it? Knowing that he has no constituency in the, in the, in the national convention. And the governors have the constituencies. Either you do that or you break the ranks. See how many governors you can get on your side. When you've gotten them on your side and they are really on your side and you know they are really on your side, then you play this, you know, the, the good cop, bad cop business and you know how to get what you want. You see, I've always said one thing. This government, this Mr. President, they lack in tact and strategy. They lack in long-term planning, strategic planning. They lack in being able to know that, you know, there's something called strategy in anything you do. They lack, you know, even what we're going through as a nation, perspective planning, they can't have it. You know that 2023 is sacrosanct. You, two years ago, you set up a body and gave them six months mandate to put in place systems and structures. By today, ADC should be, so did I say ADC? APC should be thinking in terms of coasting to victory. You allow a whole of two years to pass and then some months to election, some weeks to national, uh, to, to, uh, to primaries. You are now having a fight on how to have a national convention that will set up the template for the primaries. It just doesn't show me people who are thinking and Nigerians are watching. The one thing I would like to say is that Mr. President, no matter the crimes that you've committed, I've forgiven you. I've right. forgiven you in advance for the electoral <laughs> act that you signed because we are going to announce clearly what we want as Nigerians at the polls. So um, um, let's drift away from that and look at the Daily Trust uh, newspaper this morning. And also, I mean, some of these papers is also reflecting the, uh, the issue of um, Daily Independent, I beg your pardon, uh, Daily Independent newspaper. It talks about the People's Democratic Party uh, putting the uh, f presidential form at 40 million naira and governorship form at 21 million. Now, we're thinking that this would be an era where political parties would say, hey, uh, they would need to include it as a plan to end money back politics. But that's not the case. It feels like it's going to be uh, some kind of business again as usual. Uh, it's getting a lot of Nigerians talking, but we'd like to share your thoughts on that. Okay, there are two things. Um, the first is that I am a member of Board of Trustees of um, ADC, African Democratic Congress. And there's something they did at the last board meeting that I found extremely, um, what's the word, refreshing. And I wish that PDP could borrow a leaf and APC. If you want to be a president, for instance, we know that the cost for you to be a president is humongous. So like in my party, it was put at the forms we put at some like 15 million. But you see, and the governorship about 10 million. You know what they say? They say, look, let's do something. Bring about 10% of that cost to the party, you know, in terms of maybe 15 million, you just bring maybe 1.5 or 2 million, just something really uh, paltry. But then let us have what is called tax deductibles. Tell us what you are going to do in those states to show a level of seriousness and understanding of what this is all about. That, to me, is, is cerebral governance, cerebral thinking. That, to me, is, is, is just, is just mind-boggling. And I love ADC. But when you say you want to be a governor, uh, bring me 21 million to me at the national, as PDP is saying. I, I try to find out why I should leave my state that I want to govern and bring a whooping 21 million 
in 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 Akwaibom said that we have 31 local government that's almost close to 700,000 per local government that can get get me headquarters you know party secretariat to start with in the not too cosmopolitan you know local government areas you want me to carry that and give to you at the national so that you can use to run administration it doesn't show good thinking number two it also disenfranchises the younger people because they may not have 21 million to give to you cash but if it was tax deductible in parenthesis then they could say okay mr emmanuel is helping me with a secretariat in Mbo local government or Dofia is helping me with the secretariat in Ikodepene. We put all those down. You can see in the 31 local government, you can see my 31 secretariat. You value them at maybe maybe one, one million. And you say, okay, fine, you've shown seriousness. You just give us maybe 1.5 million at the secretariat. It makes sense. And then that is the way politics can be run. You can raise a lot of money directly or indirectly. Okay, the logistics that you want to put a man who wants to buy vehicles, he can have people volunteer vehicles for him to run with so that he does not really need to cough out the, the cost in cash. That's the way I'm running my election so that I'm not bringing out the cash. People are volunteering things here, volunteering things there, and we are working the system. But when you tell me to bring 21 million and come and give you, you ab initio disenfranchise the young people. And I think it's not a good strategy. We need to change those things. Maybe it's good. Let all these young people leave those people alone and come to parties that, that provide that platform for them, like ADC, where the young people are giving next to nothing to pay. And what you even want to do is tax deductible. Do whatever you do at home. We take it as payment to the party because you are helping us to set up the party. But, but, but the that PDP has thing. actually granted, you know, some kind of waivers for, you know, young aspirants, I mean, young persons who are contesting. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the waivers. They tell you that if you are below 30, below 30, in Nigeria, the youth population, they are claiming 45, not even 40, not even 35. If you are below 30, bring 50%. What do they mean by that? If you are below 30, bring us 10.5 million. So what's the waiver there? Sister, tell me now. Interesting. Um, <laughs> let's return to the Punch newspaper. Um, and it has a, a headline that other papers have also, um, you know, used. Um, it talks about the Electoral Act 2002, the amended Electoral Act 2022. Sorry about that. Uh, with this one, uh, Electoral Act, federal government exploring court uh, talks on amendment, says AGF. And, of course, after yesterday's a virtual executive, for the executive council meeting, uh, presided over by Vice President Yebi Oshibajo, um, the... Honorable Attorney General and uh, Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami SAN uh, fielded questions from the press. One of the things he had to address uh, was the uh, federal government's position on the controversial, if we call it that, Section 84, uh, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, which talks about the involvement of uh, political appointees at all levels in congresses and conventions of uh, uh, various political parties. He says the government is exploring three options. Number one is to represent that bill to the National Assembly. Number two is to explore the legal op option, probably going to court over this. Or number three, accepting feet. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Ezekiel Yaitu? Okay. Um, the very first thing is that I believe that is the fundamental right of uh, Malami to seek to contest any office on the land. Number two, it's also his fundamental right to go to court on matters that he does not feel uh, favors him. Number three is that it is also the fundamental right of the court to decide which way they believe the law should be interpreted and also the fundamental right of the National Assembly to say, guys, sorry, but no, okay? Now, the National Assembly have said, sorry, but no, they want to represent, let them represent. I wonder how they are going to put it. They know why they have said, sorry, but no. They know why they have said, and Malami knows it himself. The only option is for him to go to court. And when he goes to court, I, the way that the, the, the judiciary is starting to look at things objectively, look, when you are on your way out of the office, it's not the same thing as when you have a second time to go. Guys, Malamish needs to wake up and smell the coffee. 
people are already counting days for this administration and people can afford to take very hard decisions which before now they would have been maybe thinking twice about so let him just take the last option which is well you've been there for all this time if you're really interested get down people like me i don't occupy an office i'm running for the governorship and then i was assuming i was in your state you want to sit down there do all the campaigns with all the paraphernalia of the office threatening uh, contractors that if you don't support me i'm not going to pay your money you understand me all those things and then buying all the goodwill and everything to contest against me that's not fair we can understand those that are elected because they are tenured guy you were appointed sanam bodo yeah it simply means leave that thing alone <laughs> interesting <laughs> all right quickly let's uh, let's share your thoughts on this one uh it's it's on the leadership newspaper it talks about the fact that the president has addressed the issue of uh fuel shortage and uh the electricity issue that we're faced with at the time he's apologized to nigerians and the the, the big question is how does apology solve the problem i mean sorry has never fixed anything if there's no action and saying, hey, we're going to correct this. Uh, yes, the president said uh, petrol would be delivered to different states and what have you. Uh, but I, I really don't know. But what do you think, Ezekiel Yai? We have, we have two sets of people. We have people mandated to do something. What they give us is result. And we have people who are sympathizers. And what they give us is sympathy. Now, when a man that is mandated to do something gives you sympathy you are waiting because it's like oh that's so nice you are waiting and then he leaves he take you know he's addressing you and he says i'm really really sorry about it and like oh this is nice of this man at least he starts with apology and then you are waiting for him to tell you the action that he is taking to ensure this never happens again and you are saying wow he even quoted his actions with apology but when he sits down to address you and he's apologizing and while you are waiting he stands up it's like an anti-climax that what's that he turns around to even infuriate you so he came just to apologize to me and not to bring the solution to the problem so what does he want me to do okay so mr president apologizing should have been like an introduction to what he wanted to tell us what nigerians even without apology Nigerians want to know the game plan to take us out of this quagmire that we are in. That's what Nigerians want to hear from Mr. President. Apology could have been the opening remark that kind of softened us to, you know, kind of um, say, well, better late than never. But for me to just hear that Mr. President is giving me just apology and that is all, I, I think it is almost infuriating. But you would have noticed that I'm not as vociferous as I've been in the past. I am kind of a little mellow since Mr. President signed the Electoral Act. I have even forgiven him in advance. So I'm not as, um, you know. So, so, uh, so you, you, are, you have forgiven you, you, he, he, He's used the Electoral Act to, 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 yeah, to bribe yeah, you. Yeah, to me, he has. He has. He has. But, yes. but, 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 but before we move out away from the, the, uh, the, the power situation story, there's a headline that has been popular, popularized in Nigeria. It's made the rounds, a, a cutout from a newspaper from 1985. I think it's a campaign uh, 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 promise, or I don't know. I, I can't see the details of the letter, of the headline. But it says, NEPA, no more blackout, 1986 deadline. And we're still talking about blackout in 2022. I mean, are we not to blame as a people for allowing this to happen? It seems we're, we're okay I'll with it. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you that this during my campaign, I, I addressed a, um, 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 a very large body of young people in Ikodepene. I'm from Ikodepene, and I was brought up in Ikodepene. And I said something that 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 made it look like they didn't understand what I was talking about. I told them I pointed down the road. I said I live on this road, number 36 Aba Road. I lived here, and I used to cross the road and fetch water. You know, they, they knew what I was, you know, it was within the city, so they knew where I was talking about. And it was like, what? I said, yes. Every morning, I would cross the road and fetch water there. There was public water in Ikodepene in 1972, 73. And then over 40 years down the line, 
that story sounds like wow was it somewhere in london or somewhere i said where you are now that is the story of nigeria and that is the spirit of that cutout that 40 years down the line we work we are worse than we were 50 years ago we had light in my time we had water in nigeria in my time i attended a school where public school federal government college yes but out of 40, 52 staff 48 were white they were all degree holders one had a phd several had masters in the secondary school that nigeria gave to me that's why i'm so passionate about this country and Ezekiel, yet today, uh, yeah, I talk. We no, have let to... me just end this. Okay. Today, my driver, the children are attending private school. Think uh, about that. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show. Ezekiel, yeah, I talk. It's always a delight to listen to you, share your thoughts on all of these issues. We do appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on uh, this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it on the papers this morning. Uh, we will take a break down. And just before uh, that particular break, let's tell you what happened today in history. When we return, we head straight to our first major conversation. Stay with us.